Hey everybody, what's going on? It is Mad Jack from Mad Jack Videos and welcome to a new type of video from me. I'm going to be doing a budget PC build and I'm going to do my best to make this video as good as possible. A couple of things I want to say beforehand, I'm not actually building this PC and I'm getting all the prices from scan.co.uk. Uh, the link will be in the description and on screen so you can either type it in what's on screen or you can click the link down below. Also, all the parts I have recommended will also be in the description, so you can go check out them for more details if I missed any, which I probably will miss a lot. Okay, to start off this build, we're going to need a case. And for this, I've gone with the Fractal Design Core 1000 Micro ATX case. This case is a bog standard case, but it's got everything we're gonna to need to build our PC. This case comes with a microphone and headphone jack, as well as two USB 2.0 ports. It also comes with two three and a half inch bays for your hard drives. And it also comes with two five and a quarter inch bays for your optical drives, such as DVD writers, CD writers, and readers, that sort of thing. Fans that are encoded are one 120 millimeter rear exhaust fan, and that will help exhaust all the hot air in your system out. Next up, we're going to need a motherboard. And for this, I've went with the MSI Z87M G43 Micro ATX motherboard. This motherboard is the bottom of the top, and by that I mean it's got the best chipset from Intel, but is not the fanciest, most advanced motherboard. It is pretty simple, and it's cheap for what it is. The reason I chose this motherboard is because it gives you more upgradability if you decide to upgrade later on. Sure, there are motherboards that are cheaper than this. However, I've went with this motherboard because it is more future-proof than some of the cheaper options. Like I say, it is the bottom of the top. This motherboard is priced at £71, and for your £71, you get four USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, plenty of display ports such as the display port, HDMI, DVI, and VGA. The motherboard itself has three USB 2.0 headers and one USB 3.0 header. The headers are what you plug the USB port into, so you can plug other stuff into the USB ports. It has also got a PCIe 3.0 times 16 slot, which will be great for your graphics card. The PCIe Gen 3 slots are the new slots out there just now, at least on consumer grade products, and that gives you a more future-proof board. So now we've got a case and a motherboard, we're going to need the brain, which is the CPU. So for the CPU, I have went with the Intel Core i3-4130 clocked at 3.4 gigahertz. Now I know what you may be thinking, an i3, why, why would you go an i3 and not an i5? Well, the short answer is the i5 is more expensive and the i3 is pretty good. It's not as bad as you may be thinking. It is only dual core, but with hyper threading, it is recognized as a quad core CPU. So running games will not be a problem. When it comes to video rendering, it won't be as quick as an i5 or an i7. For this price range, the i3 for this build was the only option. This will cost you 80 pound, but it also comes with a heat sink fan. Not all CPUs come with a heat sink fan, some come without which means you would have to buy a third party heat sink fan. Uh, you need the heat sink fan obviously to keep your component cool, otherwise it will overheat and explode and you stuff, you know, you've, you've wrecked your system. Although CPUs nowadays tend to switch themselves off if they get to a certain temperature, so they don't destroy themselves. This CPU is also on the 1150 socket, which is the same as the fourth generation Core i5 and Core i7. This is a fourth gen, fourth gen Core i3. So it's not as bad as, say, the first Core i3, which is probably like a Pentium or something now. Okay, so this CPU will do the job. So now we have the case, motherboard, and CPU. We're going to need some memory. And for this build, I've went with the Corsair Memory Vengeance Jet Black Low Profile. This RAM can be clocked up to 1600 megahertz and is 8 gigabytes worth of RAM. So 8 gigabytes is plenty for gaming. Most games only use up to 4 gigabytes. However, there's been an exception, I think, where Call of Duty Ghosts 
use six gigabytes worth of RAM. And there is no evidence why, but that's a recommendation and it won't run without six gigabytes of RAM. So long story short, eight gigabytes is all you need. I've also chosen this particular RAM because it is a low profile. And this means if you choose to have a bigger heat sink that comes uh, up and out a bit, the RAM won't stop it from coming out. So it's low, it's small, and it will do the job just great. So now that we've got most of the computer set up, now it's time for the graphics. For this build, I went with the Zotac GTX 750 Ti 2GB from NVIDIA. So this is a pretty low-end card, but it gives quite a good punch. It is based on the new Maxwell GPU architecture from NVIDIA, and apparently it does roughly the same performance on a game like Titanfall as a GTX 480. And I have a GTX 480. So that that's, and my GTX 480 is like this big. Uh, it's two slots the same, but it's cool, it's huge, and it draws so much more power. This is purely powered through your PCI swap. So you will not need an extra PCI six pin or eight pin connector from your power supply into this GPU. The GPU is clocked at 1046 megahertz, and its boost clock is 1124 megahertz. It's got 640, CUDA cores, or streaming cores I think they're called, and you can also get £90 worth of in-game currency in Heroes of New Earth, Path of Exile, and Warface. From some review sites, I've seen that this card is pretty good bang for your buck. Uh, I was considering going with an AMD option, however, the, the benchmarks weren't as good as the 750Ti in the same price range. We would have went over budget if we went with an AMD card, which would have given better performance. This card is also small and compact, so it won't take up a lot of space in your case. This card comes with numerous NVIDIA technologies, which you can find on their website, and they're also listed on the scan.co.uk website. Of course, all the links to all the components will be in the description below. The card also costs £107. Moving on to storage. I decided to go with a one terabyte Western Digital Blue. This is a solid hard drive and I personally use it in my own system. I use my, my one for my game recordings. Uh, it's great, it's got lovely speeds. This is a very popular drive. It spins at 7200 RPM, which is the, I would say, recommended speed for your hard drive. This is a pretty good drive and it will cost you £43. So finally, we need something to power all these components. And for the power supply, we're gonna go with the Corsair Builder Series 80 Plus Bronze 430 Watt power supply. 430 Watt should be perfectly fine to, to power all the components in our system. It's also got 80 Plus Bronze power efficiency, so that means its efficiency is at 80% at max load, I think. And this card will cost you 35 pound, including VAT. Unfortunately, modular power supplies cost a little bit more, and this power supply is all we really need. It's got all the connectors we'll need, and due to its smaller form factor, will fit in our case pretty well. There's something I want to say about the power supplies, however. You can get cheaper power supplies for about £12. However, I do not recommend this, as your, if your power supply fails or catches on fire, your house is destroyed. A cheap power supply isn't a great idea because if it's got crap components in it, it's liable to break, which means it could destroy your system just through energy surges. And of course, they can also catch fire, which will destroy not only your PC, but your entire house. So I always recommend to go with a trusted manufacturer like Corsair or Cooler Master. I'm sure there's others out there, but they, those were the two I could think of on the spot. So if you do your research, I'm sure you can find other manufacturers which are good. Um, I also recommend not getting power supplies that don't have at least an 80 plus bronze certification because that normally means they haven't been checked. I'm not saying all of them, but some of them. And I, I, I personally would not trust them and I don't wanna get you guys in trouble for your house burning down. So with the case and all the components we'll need, the grand total sums up to 394 pound. That's including VAT, but not delivery. On scan.co.uk, delivery will cost you 10 pound, 
which is for everything. It's a one-time £10 thing. Uh, so you could be ordering cable ties for 69 pence and the delivery is £10. Trust me, I know I was almost stupid enough to do this. But if you order all your components at once, you're saving a lot of money on delivery. Like I say, Scan is a pretty good website to get your computer components off. It's also sourced in the UK. So if you're from the US or elsewhere, then I recommend you go search up these parts if you want to build this particular PC on, say, if you're in the US, Newegg or uh, what's another website? Amazon, maybe. I don't really know US sites, obviously, because I'm not in the US. I'm in the UK. So anyway, all the pricings and components will be in the description. You can go check out all the links to see more details about these components. And I do want to acknowledge that this is not the only £400 budget PC you can buy. There are AMD options with AMD's APUs, which is pretty much a, a CPU with very good integrated graphics on it. However, you will need very fast RAM to get good FPS in games. And it normally doesn't outperform a standalone graphics card, such as the GTX 750 Ti. There are also AMD graphics cards which you can get. However, for this build, ones that gave better performance didn't do, um, didn't fit the budget. So there are upgrades you can make. And uh, AMD cards and AMD CPUs tend to use more power, so you may need a better power supply. Of course, you always want to check if your power supply has got the correct connectors to plug into your graphics card and other components you are away to buy. For the clever ones who have noticed, I have not included an optical drive or an OS. The OS will, is completely optional, Windows 8, Linux, uh, which includes SteamOS, which is a Linux-based operating system. There's a Hackintosh, which means it's basically Mac, but you know it's for Windows PCs, basically. Uh, and of course Windows 7, Windows 8.1, they all cost different and they're all different so I didn't include that, plus if I did we would go over budget so that's an extra cost you'll need. Of course there's a monitor, mouse and keyboard, for mouse and keyboard you can get something that's worth £5, it really doesn't matter to start off with, you're not going to need a fancy thing with a million different buttons, uh, that'll, that'll be one of the expenses you may want to spend later once you get into it. And, you know, it's not really needed. I have uh, several buttons on mine, if I can show you. I've got two here. There's a button. That's actually classed as a button, because you can click down on it. There's a button there, and a button there. I, I pretty much only use this uh, for scrolling back on the web browser, and that scrolling forward on the web browser. So, extra buttons aren't really needed. However, they can be useful. Anyway guys, that's it for our budget gaming PC 2014, or April 2014, I should say. That'd be more accurate. Uh, all the prices and stuff are liable to change. Of course, through time they get cheaper, and maybe they get maybe they get dearer because whatever reason, maybe it was on sale and I didn't notice. I don't think any of these things were on sale, so I think you're pretty safe. But uh, if you want to do more research, there are other components you can upgrade to. But uh, other than that, you can also leave a comment telling me which budget you would like to see next if you want to see another budget PC build and what I would stick in my system if I had the chance. Anyway guys, I'd like to thank you all for watching. This was a new experience for me and I gotta admit, it was difficult. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was difficult. Anyway, like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more videos and of course comment on the next budget PC build or on what you would have done differently for this PC build. Maybe an AMD version or something similar. Anyway guys, thanks for watching once again and I will see you on my next video.